Okay, this is going to be episode two of our four-part series. And in the last episode, we wrote out all of this CSS to look like this. No more walls of text. Everything has its own compartment. It's all easy to read. And so in this episode, we're gonna go a step further and we're gonna use what are called mix-ins to make the CSS even more expandable and even more readable. Let's look at what a mix-in is and how to implement it. All right, so a mix-in is like a variable. We understand that variables will give us a piece of information, for instance, a color. Like I can have a color information with a variable, but a mix-in allows us to create a variable for a lot of information. For instance, an entire block of CSS. So we can create some defaults for, let's say our form input fields. We can create a default for our form input and use it for any, any form we want and reference it in any CSS we want. So let's do that. Let's take a look at what both of our forms are using and how we can make a variable or a mix-in and make our code a lot easier and cleaner to do. Let's look here, our form light has a border radius. Now, let's say I wanted to change the border radius on both of my forms. I could go on, on the form inputs. I could say, let's change this to a really large radius, which for me would be radius large. I could change it for my form light so there we go, we've changed it to be round inputs, but now we need to change it in my dark form. So I need to go large on my dark form. I have to make the change twice and I have to remember to make the change twice. So I've made that update, but I've had to do it multiple times. So let's make this easier to do. Let's create a default. Let's go, let's create some space here. In the style sheet, I'm gonna do at mixin and I'm gonna give my variable, my, my mixin a name. Let's do um, input defaults. And we're gonna do a bracket and let's grab all of the information that we wanna create as a default. So I know that my inputs on both forms have a border radius the same, they have a border the same, um, they have a transition the same. So let's grab all those items. Let's grab a border radius, let's grab a border, and let's grab my transition, okay? And let's remove it from my CSS as it is now so it don't affect anything. I remove my border, remove my border radius. There we go. Remove it from my dark form as well. Okay, so now we can see these are not styled anymore, but let's add that styling back in. So on my inputs, I'm gonna add some space here. We're gonna do at include, and we're gonna reference our variable, input defaults. Okay, just like that. And I'm gonna add this to my dark form as well. Oops, I did not, did I do something wrong? Before I continue, I feel like I did something wrong. I did do something wrong. Okay, glad I checked. Remove the border here, remove the transition there, and we'll add in our at include input defaults, and we'll do the same in our dark form, at include input defaults. So now let's take a look. Okay, so now both forms have our styling, and I can change my input styling all from one spot. So now I can change this radius back to small for the border radius. And now look, both forms are updated in one easy go. So I can make all my defaults in one piece of CSS instead of having to have it span across multiple pieces. So let's uh, let's go even further. What else do I have? Well, I have an active state on my light form and it has the exact active state as my dark form. So let's do that. Let's create an active state here. Let's go into my, my mixin and we'll do ampersand active and let's add that color that's the same for both forms. And so basically what this is doing is it's adding an add active to the parent that the include is in. So add and active is based all this, in essence, all the CSS right here that I'm highlighting is placed right here when it spits out the CSS on the front end. So anything I put here is gonna, any, anything I put here is gonna relate here in the code. So that's why I can add an add active. I can replace this line of CSS because it's gonna, it's gonna basically default here when it's outputted. So let's remove my active state and let's check my active state. 
I don't know if we're gonna be able to see it. So let's change it to red, just so that we can, I'm gonna copy this, let's change it to red. Oh, and it like pops up, it doesn't stay. And you know what, that might be because it's not, I have it on active state, but what about focus? So let's do, and focus state, I want them to have a background color of red. There we go. Now both forms have the exact same setup. So let's put this back to where it was. And let's check it out again. Okay, I don't really see the change here, but I see a change here. So let's let's go a bit for how can I fix this? Maybe I add a border. Okay, so let's do a border. And uh, I want it to be two pixels solid. And I'm gonna do a variable of base medium, which is another variable that I have. So another, um, almost a gray color. So there we go, I've added that, that color to the background on all of my input forms. But now we have this weird jump. So let's add a border style to the default where it's not active, not focused. I've put it as none, so let's change that. Let's do two pixel solid transparent. Okay, let's save that. And now look at that, no more jumping. It's kind of, it looks like it's there. It doesn't move around as much, 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 much better. So, okay, we've solved that problem. This one looks active and so does this one. You can kind of tell better. Perfect, we've done our forms. Let's move to our buttons. So both forms are using the input, the input defaults and from one area so I can make changes globally in one, one single spot. And let's go to our buttons. What can we make as a mix-in? So let's do mix-in and let's do button defaults, okay? And let's take a look. I know padding is gonna be the same for all my buttons. So I'm gonna add padding in here and let's remove it. And if you guys don't know this, WP code box, you can choose the next item that matches your selection with command or control D and it chooses the next item for it. And I'm just gonna backspace and delete all of it. Okay, so I've deleted all my padding from all my buttons. They all have the same border radius. So let's select the same border radius. We're gonna select this control D for all my buttons, delete. And what else do we have here? What else can we do? They all have different colors. They all have the same transition. So let's pull a transition in here and let's delete this from my, from my thing here, control D, delete, perfect. So all my buttons have removed all those transitions. Now what else? They all have the same border. They have the same border solid, two pixels, but they're different colors. So I have an action here, a shade here, and this one has a border color of white. So, but they have the same border rate, um, the same border style and the same border width. So let's change this CSS. Let's make it so that I can set it globally. So the border, I want to set the border width globally to two pixels. And I wanna set the border style to solid. Okay, so I can go in here, change my buttons to border color, and we'll take out all the other information and we'll, we'll only change the border color per button. So let's do that, okay. Border, I gotta change this to color. I gotta change this one to color. Remove all the extra information there. Perfect, so let's check our buttons to see if there's anything weird. Okay, something's not working there. Oh, duh. It's not working, but why is it not working? I haven't called my mix in. So I'm gonna, at my button level, I'm going to do at include, and we're gonna do button defaults. Okay, let's include this into every single button. So they all inherit the same styling. There we go, perfect. So I've added some defaults. So I can go ahead and in here change, I want my padding for all my buttons to be 2M on the sides, or on the, on the top and bottom, which looks terrible, but I can update all my buttons in one spot. So this was 0 0.6. I could change all my border radiuses from one spot. So I want these to be a border radius of large. So now all these have a larger border radius. It just makes everything a lot more easy to, to make changes. If, if your client ever says, oh, I, I don't like the border radiuses on my buttons, I don't want them to be anything. You just go in here and go zero. And now all of your buttons don't have a border radius anymore. It just makes everything a lot simpler for you in the future.
so I recommend using this. But that is Mixins. It's just creating a variable for a piece of CSS that you can use anywhere and basically creating a global styling for yourself. So you don't have to go change, make changes on individual items. You can make those changes on one item. It updates everywhere. So I hope you guys have found this video helpful. If you have, leave a like. If you want to see the next episode, make sure you subscribe. And until then, I will see you in the next video.